How did it go? I feel fun. Kind of felt good, didn't it? I'm Brookers, and I'm an internet celebrity. Hi, Hi How's it going, everyone? Welcome back to my channel. It's I'm like this introverted kid. I can do this on my own, in my bedroom, upload it, people can enjoy it. Here's finally a service where if you want to get a political message out there, if you want to get some kind of message out there. I fell down the alt-right rabbit hole. You can use this platform. You're not going to be able to turn on the TV and be able to see this. Web giant Google will pay $1.6 billion to gobble up YouTube. The, uh, the making of YouTube. Here's your new key to the new office. There was no doubt in my mind that this was going to be a huge trend of the future. YouTube celebrities are laughing along with their fans all the way to the bank. This kid, Ryan, who earned $22 million this what? year. They want growth, growth, growth. Everything's about growth. Go hit that like button. They are obligated to maximize shareholder value. Ad money, that really affects the kind of content that you can make. Their lust for hijacking people's attention. You just have to get eyes on the video. Everything on YouTube changed when the recommender algorithm was introduced. It's not just algorithmic, it's very deliberate. I'm a weapon, I'm made to be thrown at you. I think YouTube is a very intimate format. You're watching one person talk to you. When they start telling you about their beliefs and views, that pack a real punch. Now we're in this sort of misinformation apocalypse. I don't agree that it is just a reflection of society. It's changed society. This is just made up by Bill Gates and them. Go online and look it up. It's kind of dangerous how we are just waiting for there to be enough of these digital car crashes and this digital intersection with no stoplight. If we don't figure out this problem, we're going to lose what it means to be human. Hi, Alex. Great. Hey, how you doing? All right. My name's Adam. Good meeting you. Hi. Good to meet you. Uh, can oh, I start Adam. off with... Yes, we've talked before. Have we? Yes, we have. Been a little while. You're in Boston, aren't you? No. It's a bet. Okay. It's a. It's another very, you know, uh, good-looking, uh, <laughs> intellect, intelligent person that you're confusing me with. No, yeah. I'm here. I'm up in the Hudson Valley, actually. Okay. Great. I can even. Oh yes, I used to live there. Empirical Are you evidence. there? Oh yeah. Well, I'm right. I'm not far. I'm across the river. Okay. I lived in Gardner and I lived in Bearsville. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I knew that. Uh. Uh. But um. Well, Bearsville's right there. Yeah. Exactly. And then uh. Yeah. Gardner is a little bit south, but sure. Yeah. Yep. I'm. I. Yeah. I'm up here now. I was coming from the city years ago. Spent a Great. few too many there. Got a little. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. I'm enjoying I know the world. Yeah. I'm enjoying the lifestyle. Um, Good. Great meeting you. And uh, first question, I guess, about the YouTube effect, which is the documentary, your mm -hmm. documentary, uh, is after you made it, did you feel the need to go on a media cleanse? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, I uh, it was a lot of a lot of dark data. Um, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, well, tell people a, what that means. It means that we, when we do a documentary, we do research into um, uh, all of the, we sort of start filling drives with everything imaginable within the context of what we're making. And, um, and in this case, it's all of recorded human history, right? It's everything. It's like the Library of Alexandria. Um, I mean, it's literally everything. So, uh, it's really like the, the Ludovico technique, you know, that scene in, in Clockwork Orange where, where Malcolm yeah. McDowell's strapped to a chair with his eyes peeled back. Yeah. Um, yes, you're seeing a little too much of human history. Um, uh, I, think I think his name was Alex, too. 
in that. It was, case. yes. Yes, it was indeed. Um, so it could be a little too much information, but we paced ourselves and the editor and I had to be really careful. And especially as we were beginning to deal with January 6th and a lot of the, a lot of what went down over the last um, several years, uh, it got pretty heavy. So we had to pace ourselves with that level of, of what we were looking at. Yeah, I mean, the, the subject is so um, expansive, not yeah. necessarily the origin story that everybody can, you know, that's sort of a fun story to tell, you know, that part of yeah. the birth of the te whole tech movement and how that, you know, and, and mm -hmm. it's in and it's in the film, but really the just the implications of YouTube and just, you know, which is what you're getting at. And um, so, yeah, you can find old movie clips and sketches from Saturday Night Live and you know the carl burnett or whatever it is you you want pretty much anything or from so but then also yes there is the conspiracy side of uh of where we're at these days and my gosh that's you know um a big part of social media these days yeah i mean the the yeah we're we're um interested in looking at the 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 social implications and impact of this platform which is far more than just a social media platform as you know and and uh, I really felt like that had not been done. And, um, you know, you, Google is the number one most visited website in the world and YouTube is number two and everything else is just off in its own bucket. Um, right. So you really are talking about more eyeballs on a platform, on a single platform than anything else on, on the planet, including any other form of media or any other TV, radio, movies, you name it. Um, well, what was I going to say? Um... No, I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but uh, you have any documentaries uh, have you made up to date then? Uh, just how many feature docs? Yeah, I guess features start there. Um, I think this is my seventh or eighth feature documentary. Um, and I've made, made uh, a bunch of shorts as well. So I've been doing this for a while. Yeah, yeah. So it's is maybe, uh, maybe technically... Uh, resource wise and everything maybe now is the is is as good a time as any to tell this story you know i feel that that we're at a point sort of historically that google has been um you know sort of the big tech monopoly for a long time you youtube which is really its media front end has been by far the largest media entity um for a long time uh so i think that it it, it merited specific scrutiny um and the the time felt right. Gail Ann Hurd, the producer, actually yeah. came to me. She had seen my other tech documentaries and had some access and knew I would have access, um, given my tech background with some of my documentaries. So uh, it felt like a good time to tell it. And also coming out of 2020 and going into the election of 2024, uh, where YouTube is going to play a very big part, um, it felt like a good time to to examine its impact on uh, societally. Uh, and it, what what do you leave out of a documentary like that? Are there parts where you because it is such a it's a lot, right? There's a lot going on. Well, it isn't. It isn't. My stories tend to be very specific. I don't try to to swallow okay. the ocean whole. You know, even with with Zappa, my my uh, my doc on Frank, I had access to his entire archive, like all of his life's work, which was floor to ceiling, shelf after shelf after shelf. Um, and I was telling a very specific story about about making art at that period in history and American history specifically and anything that didn't work on, you know, towards driving that narrative. Uh, didn't make it into the film. And so there was, you know, probably out of a thousand hours of never seen before seen media, I mean, the movies two hours and change. So that gives you an idea of what hit the cutting room floor. And with something like YouTube, um, I have a very specific story in mind with a very specific set of of characters and my films tend to be human and people based and not really informationally oriented. So I wasn't trying to tell the whole story of YouTube. I was really, uh, I was very eager to cast a very specific group of people that had a, a very human relationship to the platform with emotional stakes and tell their story. And so similarly, anything that didn't serve that story didn't even make it into our, our rough cut. Yeah. And when you did, was it, uh, tell me a little bit about the experience of seeking out some of these early YouTube, I'll call them innovators. Uh, they, they, they figured out something, uh, in terms of how to connect to a large audience through using the platform. And you got some of the, uh, some or the, a couple of folks there that were figured this out pretty early on. 
Yeah, I mean, we go back to the very beginning. So the, yeah. the idea was to, in order to show societal impact, we really needed to contextualize what this thing was and who was behind the, the, the building of it. Um, but they weren't people who built it and then went away. Uh, Steve Chen, who's in our film, was not only one of the founders of YouTube that then sold to Google, um, he ran, he and Chad Hurley, the other uh, of the three co-founders, stayed and ran that company for a decade. So um, Steve has, YouTube has been a very big part of Steve's life and it was, he has a lot of emotion um, and a lot of personal and emotional stakes caught up in the story. So um, it's really about finding people who have those stakes, who have that emotional entwinement. Susan Wisiski, who was the CEO when we made the film, she's yep. no longer the CEO of YouTube now, but Susan was, was, um, absolutely essential to the founding of Google, much less YouTube. She was around from the beginning of Google, helped them set it up in the first place from a CFO uh, type of standpoint, um, and then went on to spearhead uh, the purchase of YouTube um, under great uh, criticism at the time. So I knew that Susan would have a lot of, of, of kind of an emotional relationship to the story. Yeah, I mean, there. it's what's great, I guess, is as you said, putting a hum, human, putting human faces on this story, especially right now when I think there's a lot of, well, more than ever, cynicism around social media. And um, uh, these are, like you say, stakeholder people have a real permanent, a, a personal uh, stake in and, and um, want to tell the story, the full story and where they were coming from. Is it, what don't people know about about like uh, the YouTube story or, or this where, where um, maybe it's in the intentions behind it. You know, you know what I mean? Well, there's, there's so much, I don't think most people know much about any of this stuff, um, nor should they really, they have lives to lead. Right. <laughs> well, um, but it is something that people are, are more caught up just like they are in Hollywood, you know, Hollywood publishes, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's, box office numbers you know who why would anybody the people wondered why does anybody care about that kind of thing i think likewise there it does hold the uh, people's attention this subject which is another good I reason think, why you, that you made the film i think that that there's a difference between something that people are aware of and something that people actually know anything about um i would sure. say the same goes for the entertainment industry which is one of the reasons we're in the strike um yeah i think that there's a a a fascination with tech new technology um so I think there's a general misunderstanding about its impact. And um, I mean, YouTube, for instance, is not a social media platform. YouTube is first and foremost, the largest media platform on the planet. It's bigger than any TV channel. It's bigger than any movie company, bigger than any newspaper, any radio. It's bigger than those conglomerates combined. Um, so I think that the scale of this particular company that is owned by the largest tech company on the planet, which is a mon monopoly um, in terms of its inter interaction with users, um, is a story that isn't really told or known very well. Um, so I think that what we were looking to do was give kind of an emotional and human face to a story that is very big and kind of hard to get your arms around. And then to focus on the impact of that particular company on the planet. Um, I think that people have a fascination with social media right now because mostly because they're either on it a lot or their kids are on it a lot. But I still think there's a kind of a baseline misunderstanding of what even social media is and its role um, in society. I think it's largely looked at as an other that, you know, oh, my kid is always on his iPad. Well, that's not I mean, unless you're just a terrible parent and that's how you babysit, which I understand that happens. But um, that's not really what it is like. It, it is a community um, and the community can have negative effects, can have bad things to it. But it's really has less to do with technology in quotes and much to do, to do with where with tools that, that humanity has, has innovated and evolved that we're now all using. It's, these, these tools are part of everyday life. There is really no option to get off platform, as it were. Um, these are the communities where most of us live, including how you and I are talking right now. So it's not yeah. to be some kind of tech evangelist and say, oh, this stuff is all, I mean, you saw my movie, you know that's not how I feel, right? So um, in other words, it's sort of as, as though somebody, if we never made a story about cars and how they affect, or highways, how they affect our lives, it's sort of like, well, right. there's a really insignificant story there because we're all involved in that story. <laughs> exactly. We're, we're, all, we're, all, we're all involved and we're all complicit. Um, and we're all, we're all complicit and responsible to a degree of getting out of it together. Um, but I also think that there's a responsibility and complicity 
on the part of the companies themselves. And I think that's been dodged a lot as well. I think you hear a lot of the narratives around this, this space is around algorithms, right? You hear that all the time. I'm really hoping that I never soon ever hear the word algorithm ever again. And it's a very <laughs> Imagine. kind of yeah. kind of a buzzy, meaningless word that is intentionally used to divert people from the issues. Because I mean there is a place to talk about algorithms. If you're if you're a computer scientist, if you're an engineer, if you're a coder, sure, algorithms can be part of your business. And obviously algorithms are at play with with technology. But these are these are human beings with normally very baseline profit motive incentives that have nothing to do with algorithms. And the harms that are caused on these platforms, as well as the benefits, have really nothing to do with algorithms anymore uh, in a substantial way that the average citizen would need to engage in them. The idea that you only go online and become radicalized and turn into a neo-Nazi is because of the code at the baseline of some company. It, it's a human nature issue. And, and there's a reason why they're monetizing for ad dollars this type of content because you know going back to yellow journalism that's the content that often attracts eyeballs well uh the documentary is called the youtube effect and it's going to it's it's streaming starting it'll start streaming august 8th on itunes amazon prime voodoo and uh, I noticed YouTube's missing, but Google Play is how is is distributing it as well. Oh well, so. I think we'll be on YouTube eventually. There's, I don't think there's any reason to assume we won't. Well, according to you, there's no way you won't be on there at some point. Soon. Exactly. You know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Gail Ann heard. Do you have a a, 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 a relationship that goes uh, further back? Because I know she, of course, produced some of uh, Hollywood's biggest successes in the past, and uh, you've been in a couple of those. Yeah, I, I love Gail. Um, I auditioned for her and Jim Cameron on Aliens um, many years ago. Oh, Too many for, it would have been for, so good in that. <laughs> for either of us to even remember. Don't you hate yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. Um, but no, I didn't remember the role or what makes any sense. I think I, in those days, I was, it was an actor who was also in film school, and I would audition for people I admire just to meet them, which I did a lot. But, uh, you know, Gail's an amazing producer. We collaborated very closely on this film. I mean, she let, she let us make our film because, because, Docs are our world, but she's been an amazing collaborator and, uh, you know, smart as hell. Uh, we've been traveling, you know, recently we've been traveling all over the world together because we've had a theatrical release and we've been doing symposiums around yeah. the rise of disinformation. We just did a symposium in, at Cambridge University last week together. So, um, you know, it's been a, been a really good partnership. I've been grateful for it. Yeah, I can tell you, you've got this, you've got this stuff down pat pretty good. Um if you're been at Oxford, I guess that would be uh, important to do. Um, and uh, what was I going to say about it? Uh, it's it's again, it's going to be out on August. I think I said um, August the eighth, which is coming right up. Uh, so I'll post this right after that, so people can go right here and then watch the YouTube. Oh, thank you. Of course, of course. And uh, now at this point, just to start to wind down things uh, things down, I'm assuming because you've made a number of tech films not only can people see the work getting access and all that i'm sure gail helped quite a bit too that's part of her job i'm assuming but you on uh, uh, as somebody now who has a, a track record right this is uh you gotta be i guess also it's a double-edged sword i assume because you may want to make documentaries about some other subjects as well have you um, finished yeah though i've never had a i've never had a problem with that I, I make the tech docs when i'm ready i hadn't made one in years i hadn't made okay. a tech docs since 2017 um and i've made several docs feature docs in between um so uh i mean no i i, I tend to be interested in, in a pretty wide swath of subjects so my themes tend to be similar i tend to make films about people or things on the edge of culture that are having a big influence on culture that those are themes that interest me. They're a good way, I feel, of getting at, um, you know, the complexity of being a human being in this day and age. Yeah, it is. And uh, so that's why I tend to find those stories. Well, I appreciate that you do and that you kind of try to help make sense out of some of them because they are kind of complicated. Uh, yeah. You know, anyway, I, I really appreciate your, your making some time and uh, doing this with me. I and I'm I'm grateful for the opportunity. I've seen the uh, the YouTube effect, and uh, hope a lot of people go catch it. Uh, again, it's going to be on most of these major platforms, the uh, including iTunes, Amazon Prime, Vudu, Google Play, and others. So anyway, thank you, Alex. Great, Adam. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.